Hey everyone, last week I got the chance to spend some time with the Huawei Mate X. It's one of the few foldable phones on the market, and I think it's the one that's the closest to what we all imagined that they would be like. So what's it like to use? I'm Angie for GSM Arena, and this is an actual hands-on of the Huawei Mate X. To start with, I don't know whether to call the Mate X a phone or a tablet. When open, it's certainly the thinnest phone I've ever used, and it's surprisingly light for the size of its display. I'm really enjoying this departure from heavy equals premium, because honestly, I don't like to carry around a brick with me. This phone is a great foray into that future. Actually, this phone makes you feel like you're in the future, and it's really easy to get used to. Going back to a regular phone feels a little bit limiting thanks to the intuitive design. And like I said, this is what a folding phone should feel like, and there's a few reasons for this. For one, the X is super comfortable in the hand. The falcon wing design is always so proud it makes it easy to grip, and even the power button is almost too conveniently placed, because I accidentally kept turning the screen on. It doubles as an always-on fingerprint reader, and it's wicked fast. It's pretty fast to get registered with it, too. When the Mate X is closed, there's no gap, except for a tiny half moon where the hinge is, and it has the weight and dimensions of a regular, albeit large, flagship phone. The volume buttons are in the bar next to the power button, and there's a USB-C port on the bottom. Everything is easy to reach, no matter how you're using the phone. Also, no matter whether it's open, folded, or with the cameras facing towards you, there's always plenty of screen. When you fold it, the Mate X automatically detects which side of the display you're facing, and will light it up. It's possible to fool and have the screen face down instead, but you just have to open and close the device back up in order to fix that. So it's not really that much of a problem. The nearly 9-inch screen itself is excellent, and it had good contrast, brightness, and from what I saw, you wouldn't have too many issues with sunlight legibility. I expected that the bendable tech would mean that the screen is less saturated or would look off somehow, but that wasn't the case. The squarish form factor was a bit strange, especially in a world where 18 by 9 aspect ratios are no longer uncommon, but even so, the video playing area is still larger than what you'd find on a lot of phones. Not to mention that for everything else, it's easier to read things, browse the internet, and generally consume media. But wait, I know some of you are about to ask this question. What about the bend in the screen? Okay, so I went in being pretty suspicious of this as well. So what I did was open and close the device as much as I could and tilted it every which way to see when the bend in the screen would appear and when it would not be noticeable. And it turns out that most of the time when you're looking at the device straight, you're not really going to notice the fact that there's a crease. It's pretty much invisible. If, however, you've tilted it towards the sun, then you will see that it's there. And the thing is, don't expect this imperfection to disappear by the time that this phone is ready for retail. Huawei knows that this is a problem and they're probably working on it, but for right now this is a first generation product which means it's gonna stay here for at least this version of the phone. Hopefully they iron it out pretty soon so they can start breathing down Apple's neck with some competition in another department. See, I have a lot of friends who draw for a living and a foldable tablet with pen support would be pretty much game-changing. They could take it anywhere. They could work anywhere at a moment's notice. But when I asked Huawei about it, they said that they're not planning on releasing any pens or pencils anytime soon. Perhaps one of the reasons for this is because while you can't see the bend, you might be able to feel it while drawing. But all right, though I'm impatient for that part of the future, for now there's plenty to marvel at. For one, this thing has an insane screen-to-body ratio. And unless you're using the selfie camera function, and even then, it absolutely trumps the Galaxy Fold's preview window. I have to admit that this is a double-edged sword because this means that the screen is constantly exposed. I seriously hope that this phone ships with a case, because otherwise I would be wary of putting it in a pocket or in a bag or in anything that isn't just covered in bubble wrap and velvet. You'll also have to be careful around water, as there is no IP protection because of the hinge components. In another generation or two, there might be a way to seal it, and I'm expecting that they're going to find how to do this pretty quickly. But for now, I panicked whenever the phone was on the same table as a glass of water. And this is a little bit annoying, because the screen is actually more difficult to clean than a regular glass one. But on the bright side, it seems to be pretty durable, because the phone has been in use, at least the one that I tested, 
for a couple of weeks, and aside from the smudges, it looked brand new. Also, the display seems to be less slippery than a regular glass one, and the inside of the phone, or back of the phone, however you want to call it, also doesn't seem to be very slippery. It doesn't seem to be made of metal or glass. It might be made of some sort of very high quality plastic, but for now, we really don't know what the material is. There's also a little square on the back that says advanced composite material, which reportedly helps with the phone's connectivity. The X has four antennas inside it and supports 5G too. Speaking of wireless connectivity, there's no headphone jack here, and this is the first and only phone that I've encountered on which this decision makes sense. There's simply not a lot of space for it. The Bluetooth connection worked pretty well, and so did using a headphone jack dongle. Despite the massive screen, battery life should be pretty good too, thanks to the 4,500 mAh battery. And when you run out of juice, there's an insane 55 watt supercharger to take advantage of. It can charge from 0 to 85% in half an hour, and it can double as a charger for your MateBook X Pro or MateBook 14 or MateBook 13, which I really love because I embrace fully the universality of USB-C. Due to space constraints and the clever folding, there's a single triple camera setup that's very similar to the main cameras on the Mate 20 Pro, but not exactly identical. There's a 40 megapixel main shooter, a 60 megapixel ultra wide camera, and an 8 megapixel telephoto lens. There's no need for a front camera because all you need to do is turn the cameras to face you while the display is folded. This also means that you get excellent selfies and video calling because you're not dealing with a smaller sensor. When shooting photos and videos with the screen unfolded, the preview window fills up the entire display. I guess this would make compositions easier if you're shooting something for Instagram. In folded mode, you can also shoot someone while there's a live preview for them on the other side, so you can adjust their hair or their posture. In general, you can tell that there's been a lot of thought put into the X's design, and the only thing that I found to be annoying was the last thing that you would think of. It's the sound that the hinge makes when you fold it. It sounds like you're cracking the bones of a tiny, fragile robot, and I felt like I was snapping the phone into every single time that I closed it up. But I was told that it's okay, this is how it's supposed to sound, and it's just the sound of all the little components. If that's the price we have to pay for foldable phones, I am gladly paying it. Now, as far as the actual price goes, well, I'll get into that in a bit. So the hardware is great, but what about the software? In general, EMUI seem to work quite well, and if you've ever used a Huawei or an Honor device, it'll be pretty familiar. Browsing and looking at things seems to be easier with a larger display, and games are more immersive. I played Need for Speed, which the X handled quite readily with the Kirin 980 chipset. The phone sports Android Pie 9.1, and after its release, Android Q should quickly become available because Google is releasing foldable phone support. For now, the software hasn't been finalized, so there were some bugs. I couldn't watch a full screen video while using another app, nor could I adjust the size of the split screen windows. But of course, Huawei is promising to fix these issues and make the software more intuitive as a whole. I really hope that they release some sort of solution for the keyboard as well, because even though the display is big, it's not big enough for regular typing, at least not comfortably, like your fingers will be super smashed, while simultaneously being too large for regular swipe typing. Although, worst case scenario, you can just fold it up and type like you would on a regular phone. Speaking of keyboards, you could theoretically buy a portable Bluetooth keyboard and have a machine that's capable of a lot of productivity, at least as far as anything involving typing is concerned. Really, the biggest barrier towards productivity on this machine is not the hardware or the manufacturer. It's the fact that there is an Android problem. See, the entire Android tablet ecosystem, as far as apps goes, is absolutely atrocious in comparison to iOS. Developers need to sit down and make better apps that are actually easy to use because this form factor is going to become more and more common. I seriously hope, seriously hoping here that the foldable phone revolution that's about to happen puts pressure on developers to make this a reality because otherwise it'll just be a waste. Well, we already have these super powerful computers in our pockets and we can't really use our capabilities to their full extent just because the software isn't there yet. Maybe now with the advent of foldable phones, there'll be more pressure on developers to make apps that are easy to work on while on the go. Or maybe there'll be more partnerships like the one between Adobe and Samsung. After so much stagnation in the mobile world, foldable phones seem like an awesome development. This goes way beyond notches and hole cutouts and hints at a future where we can actually have a workstation in our pockets. This is a whole lot of freedom that we've never really had before. And yeah, this is expensive, but honestly, are we really expecting anything else after three years of R&D 
and an entirely new category of phone? I really don't think so. Also, this phone right now is not for everyone. If you want a portable workstation, it makes more sense to invest the money in a computer or an iPad Pro and a phone. Like, seriously, it'll cost pretty much the same. The Huawei Mate X is for those that want a taste of what's to come. For those who want portability and flexibility in their lives already. And for the developers who should really be getting on this. And as far as the rest of us goes, well, personally, I'll really be enjoying the foldable phone race that's just begun. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button down below and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get our latest tech reviews as soon as they're out. See you next time.